look at all of these beautiful tall trees. I keep saying I'm at the halfway point. So now that we're at the halfway point again, I figure I'd go over my plan. All right, my plan for today, I'm gonna hike up the Stevens Lake Trail. I'm gonna get to Lower Stevens Lake. Once I get there, I'm gonna go ahead and check the water out and probably go for a, a swim. It's not necessarily a polar plunge. It's not gonna be warm either. I call it an alpine plunge. Cause the uh, lake's up about 5,000 feet or more if I'm guessing correctly. Might be just making that up. After I'm done with a little bit of swimming, I'm gonna do a little bit of drone flying, and then I'm gonna hike back down. One of the things that I regretted uh, not doing more of when I lived in Idaho full time was actually hiking a lot of the backcountry here in the Silver Valley. And so now that I'm here, I figured I'd go ahead and do a hike I've never done before because it looks awesome. I've been to the summit of the mountain that overlooks this lake that I'm hiking to, but I've never actually been to the lake. And so I'm excited to bring you along and show you this awesome hike that's available in North Idaho. Check it out. So I'm here on a Tuesday morning. Uh, it is currently, 8 a.m. so I'm here actually pretty early. I probably beat most people who are gonna be here today. It is summer so I expect to see some other people on the trail but if you can see the parking lot behind me is totally empty other than the car that I drove up here and uh, so I'm gonna have this whole place to myself. As you can tell I am hiking this alone. Just some hiker safety tips here. If you're gonna hike alone, make sure people know where you are. People back in back home, uh, they already know. They know where I'm going, when I got here, what my planned out time was. Pack the right gear. I've got backpack on, plenty of water in there, some snacks, camera and drone, which are not essential gear. The other thing I recommend, can't recommend enough, having the right kind of footwear as well. This trail is listed as a moderate trail or a hard trail. So he wouldn't want to come out here in sandals. There's wildlife out here. That's something else to keep in mind. Definitely some fresh droppings on the trail. Fresh-ish. North Idaho, we do have big cats. Some in the hills. Biggest things for me up here, I think, we've been seeing a lot of moose this season. So I'd say moose, as far as creatures to be aware of. You can kind of see it from the tree line there the first of the waterfalls that you come across here. The part that sucks about making these videos is having to hike back up to get the camera afterwards. Not even uh, barely up the hill, and I mean, this is already really a, a beautiful little waterfall here. Oh, ice cold, which tells me the lake is ice cold. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. You can probably tell it's still pretty dark, partly because the canopy is so thick. The other part of it is that I started early, and the mountains are so tall around this hiking trail that the sun actually hasn't come over the ridgeline yet. I did bring my AirPods. I was gonna just listen to a podcast or jam out and really just grind this trail out. If there are moose out here or any other animals, I'd like to be able to hear them. Not so much like hear them coming, but. Oh, one of the, one of the dubious parts of being the first person on the trail in the morning <laughs> means clearing all of the spider webs with your face. I am sucking for oxygen up here. Living in Florida at sea level has uh, really impacted my acclimation. Almost 5,000 feet up now, and we're just getting started. Elevation gain of 500 feet. I guess we're not almost five, we're 4,500, so trailhead 4,000 feet. I'm not even sure what the elevation is at the top at the lakes, but it's up there because the trail's up only, so. <laughs> I just watched an episode of Kara and Nate 
their second day or first day on that 96 hour desert island survival. And this was what they were doing to clear the webs in front of them. And I've adopted it. This is the way we clear the webs, clear the webs, clear the webs. There's a reason this isn't a singing channel. <laughs> yeah. All right, just for reference, I'm on all trails, right? There's the trailhead. I'm about halfway to Lower Stevens Lake, and that's my goal. I'm going there. The upper lake's not on my agenda. And if you look at the topo here, it looks like, realistically, like we're gonna plane out for a little bit, run the ridge line, and then cross the creek, and then climb again for a little bit to get the final step of the way. But uh, yeah, looks like we're about halfway. Oh man, look at that. Idaho is just insanely beautiful. This is a really popular trail and on the weekends and on sunny days, a lot of people come out here to hike. That parking lot where I parked, full of cars, full of vehicles. It's not just people though that like it out here. I showed you those droppings earlier. And if you look at the trail here, there's actually paw prints here. Now this could be someone's dog, <laughs> but it could be something else. I've seen boot prints, I've seen paw prints, I've seen scat. So there's people and animals on this trail, not, maybe not today, but at some point. What I said earlier, about the trail flattening out for a little bit. And if you look at the topo here, was not right. Maybe I'm just not to the flat part yet. This is the first real view back down the canyon that I'm hiking up right now. And you can see along that other ridge, roads here. This area was heavily logged back in the day. But additionally, the reason this is called the Silver Valley is not because it glistens in the sun. These hills are mineral rich, and there are mines and mining claims all over the place here. Oh, hey, it's a uh, one mile. This trail is really well maintained. There's a local mountaineering club that comes out and takes care of fallen trees, and they clear them back from the trail. They also check on drainage, trail condition, that sort of stuff to make sure that it's still a hikeable, accessible route, which is awesome for them to do. I don't know if it was a moose or something. I thought I saw movement in the woods and I could just be epoxic. No. would that be? I'm really hopeful that today I get a little bit of wildlife, just no wildlife encounters, if you know what I mean. This is the part of the trail that I said on the map was gonna be minimal elevation gain for a little bit. This is a, a nice break. I'm still sucking for air. Officially a thousand feet elevation gain so far. I'm at 5,020 feet right now. We're still working our way up. And by we, I mean you and me. Uh, I'm still totally alone out here. We're now on the part of the trail that works down towards the creek. And that'll be the last portion to get to the Lower Stevens Lake. The reason I'm kind of whispering right now is I heard some cracking in the branches and bushes ahead and I am just keeping my eyes peeled for some sort of wildlife. Got to the creek again. <laughs> it's funny, crossing it. That kind of counts as another waterfall. <laughs> that felt awesome. I am roasting. I've been hiking from all the way back there, all the way up this hill. That was a nice little refreshing soak and uh, 
trail's well marked. Little trail marker there. Time to keep going, I'm almost there. One thing here that can trip up some hikers is this sign here that says trail, you know, go to the right. I don't know where that trail goes. <laughs> that trail, there's a couple of trails for this that takes you up to the ridge line and takes you to the summit. Um, but if you ignore that and go up the trail to the left, that's the direct trail up to the lake. So both lakes. So go the opposite of that arrow. The sun is officially over the mountaintop now. Uh, I think I left my sunglasses at the waterfall. Crap. Fortunately, I don't have to go far. I realized it before I got too far away. Right where I left them. <sighs> anyone using this video to uh, gauge distance and time for hiking needs to factor in that I stop a lot to set up the camera, go back and get the camera, sometimes recover sunglasses. But I just crossed two miles. Gosh, I think I'm at 6,000 feet. <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that part out. 5,124 feet and about to start climbing again. It's a pretty well cut trail though. It's easy to follow. And it just works its way up the creek to the actual lake itself. Probably should have done this before leaving civilization, but this is the area I'm hiking in, downloading the map so that and I'm out of service, which I have been in and out of service uh, and it looks like it's going away. So I'm just downloading the map uh, now so that I can navigate. And there we go, it's uh, downloaded now. Up another few hundred feet, <laughs> almost 5,500 now, and I'm at a crossroads. That's the trail I have to go up to get to where I'm going, but there's a trail down that goes to what sounds like another waterfall, and I love waterfalls. So if I go down, I have to come back up, go up again. I could come down later and go down again, and that might be better because it might be a little bit more refreshed. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I am sucking last quarter mile has been all uphill. That being said, I think I'm at the crest here, kind of flattening out. I have a feeling that just through these trees, I'm about to emerge at the edge of the lake. The trees are starting to thin out, getting a lot more of that sunlight now, and I can see it. I can see the lake. Oh my God, so worth it. This was so, so worth it. All right, so I made it. This is Lower Stevens Lake and it is way more beautiful than I expected it to be. I'm the only one up here right now. I have this whole lake to myself. It is a beautiful day right now, but it is forecast to rain like crazy later. So I don't even know if anybody else is gonna come up here today. So this is my own private mountain lake for the time being. I'm gonna go for a swim. So while I was swimming and flying the drone, I spotted a pretty cool rock on the south edge of the lake. So I'm uh, kind of following some trails, trying to get to this big rock. Looks like maybe a jumping rock or just a cool place to hang out. Go we'll check that out and then turn around and head back down. It's time to call it a day. That rock right there, that rock outcropping, that that is my new goal. And I'm about halfway there, so it should be easy enough to get through. 
hey, I heard voices. People just showed up, so I'm no longer the only one at the lake. Made it to the south shore of Lower Stevens Lake, and this is the reward. Pretty good reward. I know, I already went swimming, uh, but this side is way deeper and there's jumping rocks, so I'm gonna peel off the gear and go swimming again. <laughs> it is just crystal clear and deep. It is beautiful. This might be my new, like most favorite swimming spot in the country. It's cold, but it's awesome. And this is like the refreshing hit that I needed before doing the hike back down. I don't know where those other people went. They showed up at the camp area and I haven't seen them since or heard them. All right, it's your turn now. Get in that water. Hiking back to the North Beach now. This is not really a beach. And uh, I was just checking my watch. Looks like the final elevation for this was about 5,600 feet. It's a gain of, what, 1,600 feet from the parking lot. Now we're mostly, mostly downhill now. That's gonna be nice. I'd say one last look at Stevens Lake. This is amazing, beautiful. I had the whole lake to myself. 5,600 feet was the final rough elevation. The water was 62 degrees. I swam a lot. And now it's almost all downhill from here. One of the things I did while I was here is um, a climber's kind of tradition, and I built a rock can. <laughs> I don't know, silly thing. You see them all over the place. They didn't have one. So I thought I would add one to the top of the lake here. Those rock cans on summits, you know, sometimes you'll find a summit log in there. So you can sign the summit log. But for here, it's just a stack of rocks. Getting back to the fork in the road from earlier and uh, now it's time to head down this trail, go check out the waterfall if I can get to it, and then I'll have to hike back up. So this is probably the biggest uphill portion of the trip. Almost died. I'm just gonna prepare you. You can hear the waterfall probably behind me. This is so worth it. Like, if you do this hike, you gotta come down here. That's not it. That is not what I was looking for. I think this is the best waterfall of the, uh, can't even get, almost get all in, of the, of the hike. This is, it's not a lot of water, but it's falling a long ways, which makes it awesome. I'm gonna go stick my head in it, because that's what you do when you find a waterfall. I know I said on the way down that this detour was totally worth it, but I'm remembering that it's a really steep uphill now. It's all downhill from here. Eagle-eyed viewers are probably aware of the fact that I'm not in my hiking boots anymore and I'm still in my swimsuit. So I'm gonna tell you, these are Keens just like my boots, and actually they've got the same tread as my hiking boots. Not as much ankle support, but for grip, they're just as good. And I plan on being in the water a few more times on this hike down, 
So I decided to keep myself kind of downgraded for gear for that reason. I love this hike because so much of it is right beside the stream. So you're just constantly getting that running water noise in the background. All right, on the way back down, I just arrived back at this waterfall. If you remember this from earlier, uh, I've decided to name it. This waterfall is now gonna be named Lost and Found. And that's because of the sunglasses that I left here earlier and had to come back for. Right where I left them. One thing about hiking alone is you got a lot of time to kind of think about things. I think I'm gonna name the other waterfalls too. So by my count, there were three main waterfalls. The very first one at the start of the trail, I'm gonna name that Front Desk Falls. And I'll explain why later. And then you just saw Lost and Found. There's a story behind that one. And then at the very top, the really big waterfall that is totally worth the hike down to, that is Watchtower. Watchtower Falls. It is tall, like a tower. It's guarding the lake. It's the last kind of guardian. So I think uh, those names are all fitting. Those are the three main waterfalls on this hike. And because I can, I named them. Look at all of these beautiful tall trees. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Part of the reason I couldn't stay up top all day long and swim, which would have been amazing, is because I have a meeting back in Post Falls at three, so I gotta get back for that. But also, it is forecast today to rain a ton. And I started with blue skies, but if you look over here, you can see our clouds are starting to firm up, especially up over the peak there. So. It looks like the forecast is gonna pan out to be true. So I'm definitely making much better time on the way down. I've got about three quarters of a mile until I'm back to the parking lot, which means I should be coming up on uh, the front desk fall. Front desk falls? I could just call it the front desk. I don't know how I missed this one on the way up, but it's another waterfall. So I'm gonna name this one the escalator. Escalator falls, because it looks like stairs. <laughs> Made it back to the front desk and uh, it's pretty loud, the waterfall, but that's fine. So why do I call it the front desk? Here's why. This is the first waterfall that you come across on this hike. And I'm less than half a mile away from the parking lot. Like I'm almost done getting back out of here. So this is, you start the hike, you're feeling good. You get greeted here, front desk. Then you reach the escalator, which is just above this one. I was just there, I just found that one. Next after that is Lost and Found. Lost and Found is where I left my sunglasses and then had to go back and get them. And then the very last waterfall is the super tall one. So of course, that's the Watchtower. And right after that, you're at the Lower Stevens Lake, which was a wonderful 62 degrees for sw swimming. It was awesome. So epic, amazing hike. Time to get out of here and get home, but man, I'm gonna get in the water one more time. I'm almost to the parking lot now and I've been thinking about my day and this wonderful hike and uh, I just wanted to say if you're looking at this video and you're thinking you want to come out here that's awesome this is a real popular trail and unfortunately uh, with that comes people who don't take care of the trail itself you know while I was up there at Stevens Lake while I was swimming I fished out beer cans and a beef jerky wrapper uh, there's been trash along the trails like if you guys come up here remember anything you bring in you've got to pack out i'd say the worst example of that are people who kind of did a half effort and um they brought their dogs with them and their dogs did their number two on the trail somewhere and so these dog owners then you know baggied up the the dog droppings and brought them back to the parking lot and realized that there's no trash cans there there's no waste service out here and they would have to pack it out drive out with the bags of dog poop and instead of doing that full effort 
and taking that out now they've left these plastic baggies full of dog number two in the parking lot i counted you know half dozen of them or so so if you're coming out here do respect it take care of it if you're out here hiking obviously you care about this stuff you want to be in it you want to enjoy nature but uh don't don't leave your beer cans in the lake don't leave your trash out and about all i'm hoping that you do is if you do come up anything you pack in pack out so that we can enjoy this for a lot longer okay